five lowdowns on why the M block market is hitting the bricks and what it means for you. Stop right there, grab a seat and listen up. So the big question is this, how busy professionals and homeowners like us make six figure profits from the property we own safely by doing it with research, data and numbers. How do we buy in a way without complications and half guessing regardless of the market conditions and still remain profitable? That is the question. Here, I will share with you exactly what we do and how we do it. My name is Simon Tan and welcome to Singapore Real Estate Insider. The end block market is in a bit of a pickle and with interest rates higher than the kite, the regulations that make your head spin. With news articles like this, will the end block market ever come back again? The last end block fever was back in 2017 and 2018, with 2017 amounting to an estimated 8.7 billion change hands and 2018, 10.8 billion estimated worth of land was sold. Stick around as how we are going to go through today with this video is we will break down the five slowdown points and what impact it will have for you as a homeowner. You want to continue watching as I will be diving into the stats with data and numbers too. This is Coach Simon Tan, your Singapore Real Estate Insider and this community is to guide you busy professionals and homeowners inside of the current property market to stay current and relevant to get ready to rip in the rewards in due time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we dish out weekly content to bridge your property knowledge cap and you want to do it for me, right? Now let's discover why M block sales will continue to be slow in 2024. If you have been following the real estate scene, you know it is facing some serious headwinds right now. Let us break it down together. First up, let us talk about the big picture, the macroeconomics environment. Developers are hitting the brakes because of skyrocketing inflation and sky high borrowing costs. Yep, you hear that right. With profit margins tighter than ever, many developers are also pressing pause on snapping up new M block properties. But that is not all. The government's recent cooling measures have made it even tougher for developers to justify those hefty M block prices. It's just trying to sell ice cream in winter, a tough sell. And there is one more twist to this story. There is an overstock of unsold units from earlier M block deals. Developers have to clear those inventories before they can even think about new projects. It is like having a closet full of clothes you need to wear before buying more. I'm going to share five key points about the slowdown in M block sales 2024 and what's the impact. Now, before we do that, let us study the history first of past M block periods. Subscribe to us if you have not done so, it will help us a lot. Thank you for your support. Analysts have highlighted several cooling measures that are impacting the market. This includes the additional buyer stamp duty and the new rule on calculating a property's gross floor area which reduces the space developers can sell. As a result, both developers and buyers are expected to be more cautious this year. This shift comes after the M block market that ended 2022 on a high note compared to the pandemic stricken years. Last 2023, collective sales totaled $3.6 billion, a significant increase from the two 2.2 billion in 2021 and far exiting 2020's figure of 127.3 million. So it was clarified and noted that the M block market picked up in 2021 as developers sought to replenish their land after the circuit breaker. However, the introduction of cooling measures in December 2021, including raising the additional buy stamp duty for developers to 40%, significantly slowed down the market in 2022. In 2021, 18 sites were sold successfully, but this number fell to 13 last year. Over 20 sites remain unsold among the roughly 30 M block sites launched, including high profile properties like Kensington Park and Loyang Valley. Economic uncertainty, higher borrowing costs and further cooling measures are expected to continue impact the market this year. It was mentioned that in 2023 will be a challenging year for the residential and collective sales market due to a geopolitical tensions and a slowing economy. Developers are also hesitant because of a new rule in June to standardize floor area definition, which means less space in projects for sale. Now, the question is, what are the different factors that contribute to the slowing down of M block sales in 2024? And what does this mean for the future of the M block market? What are some of your guesses? 
Share in the comment section below your takes. First, we have a greater resistance due to the cost of replacement properties. First up, the cost of homes today is a huge factor. To give you an idea, in May 2024, the average price for a new launch was $2,250 per square foot, while resales were about $1,600 per square foot. On top of that, the increased ABSD is another big hurdle. For example, foreign property owners now face a 60% ABSD on any new property they buy. Singaporeans and PRs are not off the hook either, with rates at 20% and 30% percent for their second property. This makes replacement tougher. In the meantime, Singaporeans and PR must come to terms with the fact that future purchases will be subjected to 20% and 30% ABSD rates. Respectively, if they were to hand over their second property to an on-block sale, it might be much more difficult to replace their rental income as a result. Are you also more resistant because of the increase of ABSD rates that deter you from entering the market too? If our behaviour as a consumer is as such, developers will also have the same concern for a high price environment and high interest rates too. Next, let us talk about right sizing to HDB flats after an on block sale. Recent rules change can make collective sales difficult. After selling a private property, you must wait 15 months before purchasing a resale apartment. A 13 months wait is required for a build to order BTO apartment, which is even more impossible. As such, this presents an additional challenge for collective sales prior to the waiting period being imposed in September 2022. The HDB is the place to file appeals regarding this, though they are probably handled case by case. Provided with such scenarios, what do you think? Would this high cost and taxes deter you from supporting an on-block sale? Next, is GFA harmonization might result in less generous offers. Policy changes, building guidelines changes have everything to do with our property market and the demand. If you are not so sure what kind of impact harmonization has in future pricing, why are the land bids lower than before, you'd like to have my opinion on this aspect? Comment below. GFA and I will create a video on it just for you who are interested. In summary, less generous developer offers might also be explained by recent changes to the rules governing the measurements of gross floor area. Features such as large air conditioned latches, planter boxes, bay windows and many others are no longer as profitable for developers. Although buyers would likely be greatly relieved by this, developers will be largely impacted because developers might make caution offers because of the higher ABSD rate and land betterment charges. Finally, more flexibility in methods of apportionment. The division of sale proceeds is described in the MOA. Traditionally, market value, strata area, share value or a combination of all three are used to do this. One of the most disputed aspects of a collective sale is still the MOA. But compared to previous years, there is more creativity and flexibility in how this is done now. One good example is the case of Abraca in 2008. It employed a MOA that was based on one-third valuation or the market value of each unit at the time of sale, one-third strata title or the unit's actual floor area, and one-third share value or the value of each unit within the development. It ensured that no single factor disproportionately affected the distribution of sales proceeds by employing these methods to balance out the differences between units. This strategy guarantees that smaller units are not unfairly disadvantaged in comparison to larger ones which is specially advantageous for developments with a whole range of unit sizes. So what do you think? Would this high cost and taxes deter you from supporting an on-block sale? And do you think the flexible MOA approach is a good solution? We've covered a lot of grounds on the factors affecting the slowdown of on-block sales. Now, let us break it down into the key takeaways. Here is what you need to remember. On-block sales are less appealing to homeowners due to high reinvestment costs in new and resale properties, reducing financial benefits. Increased additional buyers stamp duty at significant costs, particularly affecting foreign buyers and those purchasing second property. Younger homeowners face complications from a 15-month waiting period before buying a resale apartment after selling a private property. Developers are cautious with offers due to the new gross floor area measurement regulations, which limit saleable area and impact profitability. Despite more flexible sales proceeds distribution, the process remains complex and slow. 10 government land sales sites are scheduled for release in the first half of 2024 and it is anticipated that these sites will produce about 5,450 private homes, a 5.6 increase from the previous periods. Nevertheless, because of the increased expenses and lower sales, developers are putting in lower than expected bids. Recent tenders for sites like Clementi Avenue 1 and Holland Drive demonstrated their apprehensive approach by emphasizing joint ventures as a way to reduce risk. Compared to on-block sales, which are fraught with issues like high 
reserve price and a diminished demand as a result of cooling measures and high interest rates. The GLS program provides greater predictability and pricing discretion. Condo owners need to modify their expectation in light of the current market conditions as a 60% ABSD rate deters foreign buyers. In contrast to the difficult on block sale environment, developers have a good chance of obtaining land if their bids are accepted overall because there's less competition for GLS tenders. If you are considering buying or selling on block properties, it is important to do your research and consult an expert. You can navigate the market's complexity and make the best decision with the assistance of a real estate expert. If you have more questions or thoughts about on block properties, I would love to hear from you. Drop a comment below and I will do my best to answer personally. Who knows? Your question might even inspire a whole new video. For your own in-depth assessment, pause and scan the QR code here to get in touch with me to guide you safely in your property decisions. Join the conversation and be part of our community. And thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.